for joining my Instagram live. My name is Makita Waterman. I'm the CEO of Top Writing Services Incorporated. Sorry everybody, I'm just putting my little backdrop here so that I can sit here on my couch and enjoy the live. So today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, Instagram and LinkedIn marketing. I really believe that LinkedIn is an undervalued app. Hey Garrett, how are you? That a lot of uh, business owners are using now. Um, Instagram is also a pretty good app and it really depends on the type of customers that you're trying to attract, uh, the audience that you want to bring into your pipeline, etc. But Instagram and LinkedIn have been a great resource for my business on so many different levels and as well as the clients that I work with from getting podcast requests to talk on people's platforms or Instagram Live or even LinkedIn Live requests or even just being invited to different professional online groups that you would have never been able to reach otherwise. Um, so we're going to start off with LinkedIn uh, because LinkedIn is such a great app and I really believe that every entrepreneur should be on this app if they have an opportunity to do so. So LinkedIn marketing is almost like being in the room of a networking event. And the person that I wouldn't say speaks the loudest, the, the person that's most knowledgeable, the person, hey, how are you? The person that's most knowledgeable, uh, the person that shows up more, the person that has the most expertise and a great personality sh will shine on LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn is great for personal and business brands, self-employed employees. It's no longer an app these days, but here's some tips that you can start using uh, to really build your brand on LinkedIn, attract customers and leads, and even invitations to people's podcasts and platforms so that you can be introduced to their audience. The first thing that I would say is you wanna create uh, a schedule of about 30 posts on LinkedIn, at least one more th month of posts. Now, some people will tell you you can post several times a week. I highly recommend that because the reach on LinkedIn is good that you are posting at least one to five pieces of content per day. And what you wanna share on LinkedIn is the same networking conversations that you would have if you were an actual uh, event in your city, meeting potential customers or other people in your industry. You wanna talk about news, you wanna talk about your opinion about things that are happening in your industry, your achievements, your failures, lessons learned. On LinkedIn, people are looking for educational content, so you really wanna set yourself apart from everyone else by being the expert at what you do. Um, you also want to talk about things that will motivate people and personal things that are going in happening in your life or even things that happened to you in the beginning of your career to really set that personal brand with a mix of education on LinkedIn. The reason why I truly believe that personal branding and um, marketing and education is good on LinkedIn is because people will eventually start to see the same content from you, whether you're in real estate. Uh, whether you are in healthcare, technology, etc., but they will start getting curious about who you are. And they might not necessarily ask you that, but there's always an opportunity for people to send you messages and start asking if they can meet with you on Zoom. And then that's where the conversation will start coming in. But if you already are sharing parts of your life, uh, parts of your personality, things that you're learning along the way of your uh, career, your business, it will be an added value because people will get on a Zoom chat with you and we'll actually start bringing up things that you've mentioned from your personal life or your career or your business. So make a note of that. You wanna have a mix of um, personalized uh, messaging. I also recommend that you talk about your achievements. This could be wins for your customers, wins for your clients, something that you learned in your industry that you just started doing and all of a sudden it's helping you um, attract the opportunities that you want in your career or your business. And I'd say do that once a week. Uh, you don't wanna to be too much of a showboat. Um, but there's nothing wrong with being honest as well. Nobody's going to know how successful you are unless you share it at least once a week. Now, I'll give you my LinkedIn strategy that has been working for me, especially since most people are spending more time on this app looking for jobs, looking for business prospects and potential customers. On Mondays, I talk about myself. So I'll do an about me post. I'll talk about something that I learned uh, in the beginning phases of my business. And I'll always bring it back to the audience. So um, bringing it back to the audience is maybe saying something about, I don't know, something you learned last week that uh, helped you become a better person in your career or your business. But then you will bring it back to your community. What did you learn that 
dot, 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 or what do you want to share that is similar? What similar personal stories have you experienced? Leave it below in the comments. And that's how you really get people engaged on LinkedIn. It shows that you're an expert and the more people that like and leave comments, other people will be inspired to do the same. On Tuesdays on LinkedIn, I generally do carousels. Uh, carousels are shareable content on LinkedIn and people really like looking at these slideshows to look for facts, to look for information. Um, sometimes these slideshows are shared with people within their company. So it's actually a great way for you to stand out uh, for people to buy your products and services with whatever it is that you're doing. Now on Wednesdays is the day that I show an achievement. It could be a screenshot of um, an ad I did that did really well. It could be a blog that uh, was refeatured on a high traffic site. It could even be um, a viral video that what did really well on TikTok. And I do that because, you know, anybody can get on any app and claim that they're an expert. But if you don't have anything to back up your expertise, how are people really going to know that if they pay you, they're going to get results? On Thursdays, I usually share a TikTok video um, or some kind of carousel as well. I bring it back to something educational or I just put a bunch of questions in that carousel to get people to really think and realize they have a problem. Because the truth is, some people don't realize they have a problem. Uh, if you're, if you do businesses, uh, business with other businesses, they might not realize they have a problem until you share it in a carousel or bring it up in a video uh, based on frequently asked questions or something that you keep noticing that people are doing that can actually bring it back to you as the expert to help. On Fridays, I try to keep it light and fun and exciting. So I take some of my uh, interesting videos that I share here on Instagram Reels. I share it on LinkedIn. And I find that gets people to laugh, smile, and it usually gets people to also connect with me. I'll, and most of the time when I get uh, leads in my inbox on LinkedIn, these are not people that were uh, intrigued by um, a carousel that was educational. It was actually, they admit that because I had some personality, I made them laugh or I made them smile. And it uh, intrigued them to reach out to me so that I can help them with their products and services, etc. Um, on Saturdays and Sundays, the people are not really spending too much time on LinkedIn, but I still post anyways. And I'll do um, a TikTok video that's about 15 seconds that's educational and entertaining. Or again, I'll share some kind of a carousel because carousels really do well. They get way more reach than any posts um, from what I've seen so far on LinkedIn. So that's a wrap for LinkedIn. If you're looking to become a public speaker, get invited to people's podcasts, Instagram lives, or even LinkedIn lives. If you're looking for people to reach out to you who just want to network, or maybe you want to just build your reputation in your city or on the app um, for any kind of service that you offer, provided that you can do it from your laptop, LinkedIn is definitely the place to be. Um, feel free to ask any questions as I go along. I'd love for this uh, presentation to be as uh, interactive as possible. Now, Instagram, we'll talk about Instagram marketing. Instagram is really fun these days. Uh, it's trying to compete with TikTok, so you can tell I'm really amping up on a daily Instagram Reels per day, showing personality, trying to get people to smile, laugh, or really just uh, relax. It's a really stressful time right now due to the pandemic. And hey, Miss, what will you do on Saturday and Sunday? Oh, Saturday and Sunday on LinkedIn. Uh, I like to do a 10 slide carousel. And it can be just general tips. Um, I try not to put too much information in these carousels, but you can take facts and anything that you take from like Forbes or Business Insider or anything that's factual from another source, always quote your sources. You don't want anyone to think um, that we're kind of like uh, copyright infringing. So you can literally do a carousel of about uh, 10 slides with just facts and statistics and then quote the sources. Uh, because it will make it look like you actually did some research. You can ask a series of questions, um, getting people to think about a problem that you could potentially uh, offer. Um, I also share sometimes just 15 second videos. Um, I, I find last uh, year people had time to read and watch, sorry, my three minute videos that I share on IGTV, but I'm finding people don't have that much time, but for whatever reason, they really like carousel. So, if you have a good graphic designer, if you're using Canva, I really recommend that you share at least two or three per, um, per week. And I would mix that with like a really short video as well. 
So for uh, Instagram marketing, uh, this is a really fun and creative space. People are really looking to get to know who you are uh, on a personal level and they kind of want to feel your personality, uh, your intention and what you can bring to the table with every post that you share. Um, Instagram is, uh, it can be educational, um, but I would really recommend that you do the same thing as LinkedIn, but just a bit differently. You can let your hair out here on Instagram. You can have a little bit more fun um, and you don't have to be so tied up and super professional on this app and it's completely okay. Um, you also don't have to look perfect in every video or photo that you share. Uh, on your Instagram stories, you don't have to have makeup. I do it all the time. I do my best to wake up every morning. I don't fix my hair. I don't put um, lip gloss on or eyeliner on. And um, I, I just really want people to see me unmasked, unmakeuped, and uh, get a sense of my personality first thing in the morning. And I think people really like that because it's almost as if you're bringing them into your home. You're bringing them into your uh, daily morning ritual, which is really cool. Um, Instagram stories are still really powerful, but the numbers are going down. Um, I highly recommend that every post that you share, you obviously want to put it on your Instagram stories. Um, throughout the day, if a thought comes to you, a motivational thought, or maybe you're just having a stressful day, don't be afraid to um, uh, bear your soul, shall I say, on stories because people are actually looking at your stories to really get to know you a little bit more. Um, I also recommend that you share educational content that you might not share on your on your um, your front page on Instagram on uh, your Instagram stories. So I'd say 80% education on your stories and 20% personal. Uh, if you can do that mix, I think it's a really good uh, mix. People are still looking for education either way, but the stories has changed a bit. It used to be people kind of showing their cooking and all this other stuff. People are not really caring that much for that. They're really looking for education and checking to see if you can help them with a problem that they cannot do themselves. Um, Instagram Reels, I love Instagram Reels. I'm having a lot of fun with it. And um, the more fun I can have, I really think the more people start to feel as if they're getting to know me. And it's easy for me to say because I've been doing this um, TikTok thing for a good 10 months now and that's where most of my Reels videos are coming from. But if there's any way that you can educate people and entertain them at the same time, show them behind the scenes, show them things that you're working on that are coming up soon, um, uh, answer frequently asked questions in your Reels, use trending music if you have a personal account. If you do have a business account, I do believe that they will strip the music from Instagram Reels, but if you use TikTok, you can you can still use those uh, songs in your video and transfer it over. But just have as much fun as possible. Let your hair out, have fun. Of course, be professional as possible, but just show people who you are and don't worry too much about the number of views. Um, I didn't really start getting too much of an uptick on my Reels until uh, probably about three or four months into using it. And the more fun I have without, um, scripting everything that I do, just candid moments, uh, the better the videos on Instagram Reels. Um, what else can I say? Instagram TV. Now the views on Instagram TV, they're decreasing. Obviously our attention spans are getting lower and more people are spending time on Reels, but there's completely nothing wrong with sharing one to three minute video, um, I'd say every day or when you have the time. And I say that because uh, Instagram Reels only offers 15 to 30, 30 seconds on our videos, but people still might want to learn a little bit more about you and who you are, what you do, and how you can help them. So if you can even just um, film maybe seven videos a week, maybe on the weekend, if you have a, like 30 minutes or an hour, film about seven videos, leave them on your phone, share it on IGTV, and again, between one to three minutes. And um, whatever you do, wear something bright. And I say that because when people see your video on IGTV, uh, if you're wearing something bright, it will catch people's eye and immediately um, inspire them to stop and watch. And try to film your videos kind of like the same way that I have here. Um, I think this is horizontal versus vertical. Uh, because if you do your videos like this on IGTV, it actually takes up a whole lot of footprint on our timeline. If you do it like this, it's just really, really small. I'd rather, when I see videos like this on the timeline, I stop versus videos like this. So try to make sure that your phone camera is this way. Um, what else can I say? Instagram, 
your captions always have a call to action at the very bottom. Um, every caption that you have needs to have a call to action. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a selling point, but it could just be click link in bio to read my blog, click link in bio to learn more about what I do, um, click link in bio to follow me on LinkedIn or TikTok or Twitter. Um, always have a call to action. Uh, click link in bio to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't ever leave an opportunity out on your captions um, because that's that's it's missed opportunity. I can say that um, I've been doing this a lot since last summer to now. Every caption I have has some kind of a call to action. My YouTube channel went from 21 followers in three months to uh, four months to about 100 subscribers. So you definitely want to have a call to action. Um, the longer your captions on Instagram, the better. When your captions on Instagram are long and people are spending a good minute or two reading your captions or watching your video, it signals to Instagram that this post is important. And unfortunately, only 15, 10 to 15% of our followers actually see our content. So when people are spending a lot of time watching your video, reading your carousel, or reading that long blog post caption on Instagram, it tells Instagram this is important and it actually pushes that post out to more of your followers outside of the 10 to 15%. So if there's any way that you can do a blog post like several times a week, I recommend that you do that. Okay, so now we're going to get into video marketing um, tips on how to improve. I always tell people try within the first five seconds of your video to tell people what you're going to talk about. Um, try to also drive them to keep going and at the end as i mentioned with your captions in every video uh, even if it's an instagram reels video try to do a call to action and that could be um like i said before click link in bio to check out my youtube channel or do you have you can ask a question do you have any questions what do you think have you been through this before what issues are you having with xyz always have some kind of a question or a call to action at every video if it's an IGTV video where you have more time to talk, always make sure that you have that call to action. If you're new to my page, click the follow button. If you want to learn more, read my blogs, click link in bio to check out my blogs. Always have the call to action in every one to three minute video that you have. Uh, because if you don't tell people where to go, they'll just kind of stay on Instagram and LinkedIn and keep following your content but they won't have any uh, additional resources to look at or read or watch if you don't guide them to a call to action. Um, video marketing. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, let's, hi, how are you? Thanks for joining Eddie. We also have to keep in mind that um, as far as our videos are concerned, there are people with disabilities that might have hearing problems or um, maybe they cannot read. I'm not sure what kind of, uh, disabilities uh, people have out there these days but try to add subtitles in your reels videos and if you have some kind of um, a video uh, editor add subtitles in your IGTV videos as well how do you come up with captions for your posts that's a good question um, I really try to put myself in the minds of consumers and I try to ask myself what problem are people facing right now and how can I solve that Hey, Malcolm's Choice, how can I solve that in this caption? So my captions are really spaced out. You can tell I use um, emojis. I try to keep the same emojis for branding purposes, but I always think of the five W's, who, what, where, when, why, and how. And I do my best to create those captions, um, getting people to think, smile, laugh, take action, feel inspired, feel that they can do something too. Um, and I really go from there. I think about what are what is... Um, if somebody were to come to my page for the first time, or if I were to meet somebody in public at an event or something, what's the what are the first couple of questions these people are going to ask me? And th that's how I come up with my captions. I try to answer commonly asked questions uh, that people ask through my captions. Um, and I'm getting to a point where I you'll also use insights. So if you have a business Instagram page, click on the insights, um, click on see all, and click, make sure that you look at your reach, um, engagement, uh, even share or bookmarked. And look at the post within the past 30 days or 60 days that did well. And just keep kind of doing 
talking about the same thing over and over again, but not necessarily the same caption or the same message or strategy, but stay on those topics. Now, there will come a time where people might get a little bored of those topics because maybe you're kind of just doing the same thing over and over again. So give people an element of surprise, try to be unpredictable, um, share new topics, share news, share something completely different, share something that's coming up in the pipeline, maybe 2022 facts, tips and advice um, that people are already talking about now uh, and try to get people super excited about what's to come. And I think that will definitely help. You're, you're free to ask questions, Malcolm's Choice, um, trying to keep this live as interactive as possible as I go along with my presentation. Uh, what else can I say about video marketing? Video marketing is here to stay. Um, if you're not used to getting in front of a video, I highly recommend that you do it at least once a day. And I know that might sound a lot, but just 60 seconds, start off with a one, 60 second video on IGTV and just talk about what you know. Um, also, talk about who you are. Every three days, every nine posts, I like to talk about myself and I talk about something I learned uh, something that shares more of like a human moment of my past, my present, or my something in my future that I want. Uh, I do that because people buy from people. We do buy from companies, but you, there's usually a human element that we saw within that company with something they shared in a TV commercial or a magazine ad that made us buy from them. So try to be personal every several days. It doesn't always have to be business, business, business. You can take it personal. And just try to do that every three days and people will get to know you slowly but surely and you'll start to kind of um, the you'll, they'll start to trust you with time a little bit more if, other than people who are just sharing educational content on LinkedIn and Instagram uh, okay so Instagram LinkedIn algorithm so the Instagram algorithm has changed um, I mentioned earlier Malcolm's choice that only 10 to 15 percent of our followers see our posts so the way around that is to spend at least an hour every day, I'd say 20 minutes before you post, start checking your timeline, things that you like, things that you're inspired by, leave comments, go into hashtags of your potential customers. Hi, Andre, how are you? Go into hashtags of your potential customers and create conversations with people. And most importantly, send DMs. I'm not sure how information about me has to do with my business? That's a great question. Uh, that's a good comment, Malcolm. So in 2020, the one thing that I learned across the board is a personal brand is very important. Now, if you don't wanna share your face, that's okay too. There are millions of meme pages on uh, Twitter, TikTok and Instagram that have millions of followers. So you don't have to necessarily share your face. Um, but people do kind of want to get to know you. Now, if you have employees, Malcolm, uh, you can share your employees and share a personal touch to that. And um, I don't know if you're an introvert, but it really does go hand in hand. I'm not sure how to share that and keep it relevant. Okay, so here's what you can do. If you have access to a graphic design app or Canva, do an eight slide, um, uh, introduction about who you are. I did that before. You don't have to put your personal page, but maybe you can put your personal logo. And in the first couple of pages, talk about how you started in your business. And then the last couple of pages, talk about, you know, what you're passionate about, where you are now and where you want your business to go. It doesn't have to be a video, but try to start off with just once a week. Um, Cause I don't, again, I'm not sure if you're an introvert or uh, maybe you're just kind of new to this personal branding thing but once a week talk about yourself and it can even just be a picture of yourself before uh, the pandemic, um, talking about your favorite place to go on vacation or um, something that you're really passionate about or the reason why you started your industry. It could be even a heartfelt uh, story about maybe your mom or your dad or maybe you just woke up one day and you wanted to leave the workforce and you decided to start your business. These little human-like stories, Malcolm and everyone else, really, really set you apart from your competitors. Because even though there are millions, if not thousands of people that do what we all do on this app, the only thing that sets us apart is how we show up, how we make people feel. And marketing is really about feelings. It's about making people laugh, smile, cry, feel moved. And 
it really does come with personal stories. So I hope that answers any doubts that you might have. Feel free to ask additional questions because I know personal branding, it's I myself didn't want to do that two and a half years ago. Uh, but when I started doing it, I started seeing my business elevate on Instagram. I started seeing people f feel more confident and wanting to use my services. And I'm an introvert in real life. If I'm in the room with 50 people, I'm probably going to be one of the few people that are going to listen more than talk. But um, it's something that I had to grow into and it's been helping me on so many levels. So you, again, you don't have to show your face, but if you can just share personal stories maybe once a week and a caption, um, you don't have to share a photo of yourself. You can share a stock photo. Great question, Malcolm's Choice. Yeah, I agree. Um, but the pandemic, it really changed a lot, Malcolm, Andre and everybody. It changed the way that people are buying. I myself usually buy from people that really make me feel good when I open up an app. Hey, Swinky, how are you? I uh, generally don't buy from people that don't m emotionally move me. And I didn't really start feeling that way until, hey, Angela, how are you? I didn't really start feeling that way until the pandemic. So people buy uh, based on who makes them feel good. And unfortunately, that's just kind of the way it is with personal branding. So I hope that kind of creates, hey, Hanson, long time no see, how are you doing? All right. so. Let's get into it with the Instagram. So I'll continue to go on with this Instagram thing. Um, it's making it really hard for people to see your post, but that it doesn't mean that you can't show up every day. Hi, how are you, Murray T? It's been a while. So what you just wanna do with Instagram again is 20 minutes before you post, definitely get into the comments, start sending people DMs, send voice notes. Um, voice notes do really, really well in DMs. I don't know what it is, but it sing signals something really good to the Instagram algorithm. Um, but the more and more that this app becomes popular, the more this app is going to start trending into um, Facebook. It really is. Yeah, Angelo is right. Um, unfortunately, Facebook, I think only 2% of the people see what we share. Right now on Instagram, it's 10 to 15% of our followers see what we share. It doesn't mean that you should give up on Instagram. It's still a really great lead generation app, but just remember that you're going to have to socialize a little bit more to get noticed by people that don't generally see your content. Now the LinkedIn algorithm, um, LinkedIn is your best asset. I'm telling you it's nothing close to TikTok, but you can put something out there on LinkedIn and get noticed way more than and way quicker than you can here on uh, link, uh, Instagram. One thing I can say about LinkedIn is the hashtag, hashtag game is really strong and people are really looking for education. So um, I was speaking to City's Choice uh, earlier this morning and he told me that somebody came on my live uh, several weeks or months ago, jumped on LinkedIn and all of a sudden got a contract for his uh, HVAC company. Um, so that's the power of LinkedIn right now, everybody. If you're not on LinkedIn sharing content, don't be afraid about what's professional and what's not. LinkedIn right now is like Facebook. Um, people are literally sharing stuff that I wouldn't share myself, but they do it anyways. Good to know about LinkedIn. Yeah, absolutely, Angelo. I'm sure a lot of the videos that you share could do really, really well on LinkedIn too. So don't feel intimidated by LinkedIn. It's not the job seeker app and um, I see people from Shark Tank. I follow people from Shark Tank and I see them sharing kitchen conversations with their wives. So it's a really good branding opportunity. Just be patient uh, with both of these apps, LinkedIn and Instagram. I'm not telling you that if you follow the strategies I was sharing earlier that you're going to become an overnight success. But with everything um, as far as technology is concerned, you have to be consistent. You have to share heartfelt stories. Yes, I got a writing gig on LinkedIn last week. Yay, that's awesome. See what I'm saying? LinkedIn, you can you don't even have to post on LinkedIn. And I don't, I don't uh, recommend that, but you can even just leave really fun, insightful, interesting comments on people's posts that are trending and you will get DMs. Like I follow big marketers that are like, have big agencies and I purposefully leave comments on their posts and I have people sending me messages saying, I saw that comment that you left on this person's post. I really like this person. Can I connect with you? 
So um, yeah, LinkedIn is the place to be. I get leads every week on LinkedIn. Uh, I share a lot of content on LinkedIn, but I also am a part of the community and I'm engaged. And uh, if somebody shares a post of mine on LinkedIn, I am not over my head. I will always go back to that person and I will thank them for resharing my content because they really don't have to. Uh, Andre said, consistency is key. I'm learning that with social media right now. Yes, consistency is key because the reality is out of sight, out of mind. Um, I unfortunately had to, uh, to unfollow 35% of the, the businesses I was following last year. Unfortunately, maybe they went out of the business, maybe they lost hope in Instagram, but I had to unfollow a lot of people last year because they just were not showing up anymore. Um, and it was unfortunate because I liked those people's content and I was looking forward to seeing more of their content every day, but I can't follow inactive accounts. And even though that this is uh, totally different than what I came here to talk about, uh, if you guys are following dead accounts, accounts that obviously are inactive, um, accounts that are bots, so bots on Instagram, we're kind of going into Instagram now, uh, but bots are basically people that are following you and they don't have a profile photo they're probably following more people that are following them. Remove those people from your following list. And when I say remove, click on followers. It's gonna take a little bit of time, especially if you're following thousands of people, but do an audit. If you are noticing bots are following you, remove them from following you because it will slow down your account and mess up um, your standing, your page on Instagram. So Aladime, oops, sorry, Aladime said, what is your username on LinkedIn? Okay, let me see if I can type it. Sorry, everybody. If you search here, or you can click a uh, link in bio, but you can find me here and um, you'll find me there on LinkedIn. I've grown my account on LinkedIn a lot. I remember Around this time last year, I had about 375 LinkedIn followers. I think I have about 982 now and I have, I only had about a couple of hundred, sorry, I had a couple hundred followers on LinkedIn. Now I have over 1300. And on LinkedIn, I had about 300 something connections, have close to a thousand. But again, it's because I show up every day, I'm consistent and I get into comments. I I don't have too much time commenting as much as I used to last year, but I try to just check my timeline once a day and I leave comments on things that really inspire me. And, and it's not just the content, it's just the socialization on LinkedIn can really help you get noticed by recruiters, help you get noticed for contract opportunities if that's what you're into, help you get um, noticed by companies that want to buy what you offer uh, because you're standing out as uh, a LinkedIn expert. And um, when you have trending posts, it really, really helps you stand out. And uh, last thing that, that I can say outside of the LinkedIn algorithm is if you have a post that really performed well, you had a lot of likes, a lot of comments, make sure that you feature that on your page. Because when people come to your LinkedIn page and they see that you had a really successful post that got a lot of likes and comments, it's just a really, really good for your personal branding. And then last but not least, the number of posts to share. So on Instagram stories, I'd say between six to nine stories a day. If you're really ambitious, one an hour. And I know it sounds like a lot, but um, when people keep seeing your Instagram story pop up every time they open the app or when they're on the desktop, it really keeps you in their mind. So I recommend six to nine Instagram stories if you have the time. Um, and then post on your page for Instagram, I'd say between two to three per day. I know it sounds like a lot, but if you're really, really wanting to um, create more following, loyal customers, and even continue to educate your customers, you really got to put in the work. Um, I really think that uh, even if you can just try your best to do at least one every several days, I can't guarantee that will help you, but a mix of socializing and posting with these number of posts per day on Instagram will help. Now, LinkedIn, um, if you have in LinkedIn stories, I do not have that feature yet, but I recommend that you get on it if you have LinkedIn story feature. But I'd say between two to five posts per day on LinkedIn is really ideal because the algorithm is so rich um, and the more you post, the more people see you on your timeline 
the more you stand out um, from other people that do what you do, and the more people will actually start to feel like they trust you from a virtual perspective. So I'm going to stop talking. It's about 35 minutes. Does anyone have any questions about LinkedIn or Instagram marketing? Awesome. Glad to be connected. Glad to see your content if you share it too, Oleami as well. Glad to see all of you on the line. Um, don't be shy, I'm here to answer questions. Even if you're kind of stumped on something that you're currently doing. I have the LinkedIn story, but I don't know how to use it yet. Okay, um, what I'll do is I'll look on YouTube and I'll send you a video on how to, to upload a story on LinkedIn. I, I wish I had the uh, feature, but I don't have it yet. All right, I don't see any questions here. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for joining uh, my Instagram Live. Uh, this was really uh, informative and exciting. Glad to know that all of you are really interested in LinkedIn and Instagram. Uh, this will really help me to be able to create more content about these two apps and do it in a way that's educational and entertaining for each and every one of you. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, I'm going to start using LinkedIn more. Yeah, I really recommend that you you do. I see a lot of realtors doing really well. Actually, I don't see enough realtors doing well, but I do follow some and they do a mix of different things. They share motivational posts. They share uh, houses and property that they've got listed. They do little videos, one three minute videos, just talking about their perspective on the real estate market based on the cities that they sell property. Realtors do really, really well on LinkedIn. I know that for sure. Thank you for the video. I will also get on LinkedIn too. Yeah, everybody, LinkedIn is a gold mine. I'm telling you that right now. Like if I had to compare the both between Instagram and LinkedIn, I get my higher highest paid leads on LinkedIn. I've worked with some of the top companies like um, Intuit QuickBooks and the government just by being uh, on LinkedIn. And at that time I was only posting once a day. So imagine that if you just post once a day on LinkedIn you have your page optimized, meaning you've got the keywords that, you know, customers, cl potential clients, employers, or recruiting companies are looking for. Uh, you cannot lose with that app. The reach is so good. And here's the thing that I'll leave you with on LinkedIn, not compared to Instagram, but there are a lot more people that have accounts open on LinkedIn than people that are creating content. What does that mean? It means it's an ample opportunity for you to shine. Now, yes, I see a lot of people liking posts and resharing posts, but there are more people who have accounts on LinkedIn than people that are sharing original content, which is a game changer. If you're committed to the process, just be patient. You might start putting content. You're going to hear cricket, crickets. People might not be, you know, corresponding with your content. But there are more people on this app right now that are really looking for education and looking for pe to buy from what people like you. Okay, awesome. That's great. And so you just want to stay committed. Don't give up um, on both apps. Instagram, the reach might not be as good as TikTok and LinkedIn. But uh, if you really use these apps really well, you should be getting customers and leads every week. That's how you know you're doing well. I'm not saying that you're not doing well. It's just over time of the consistent behavior of just showing up. You should be getting DMs every week from multiple people on both apps. Um, and when you get to that place in your business, that's when you know that you've hit that sweet spot, that people trust you, that people are looking at you as the dedicated expert. Um, and people will share your content too. Um, because it's not just what we share, it's what people want to share about us as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate you appreciate each and, any, each and every one of you joining me today. I have a project that I have to finish for customers. It's actually a LinkedIn project. Um, startup found me, uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, uh, startup found me uh, last week on LinkedIn, and now I'm writing his uh, LinkedIn captions. So it's just the power of putting stuff out there. And next thing you know, somebody comes in your DMs, you, you sign a contract and you've got a new customer. But I have to do a LinkedIn article for him and I have to do a um, some LinkedIn posts for him for a full month. So I've got to get that finished up before it gets too late. But I will be here next Monday, every Monday, same time, same place. I haven't chosen what I'm going to talk about yet. But every Wednesday around 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I talk about what I'm going to share. So I will let each and every one of you know this Wednesday what I'll talk about the following um, 
And if anybody is in Canada on the line that wants to go live with me, I have the Canada Business Show. I interview you. You don't have to have a business. You can be a realtor or self-employed. If you're on the line here and you own a business and you want to be on my Instagram live show, I will interview you and introduce you to my audience. So let me know if you're interested or if you know any entrepreneurs in Canada that would like to uh, join me on my Instagram live. All right, everybody, I'm tuning out and stay safe. Um, if you have any questions on the sideline that maybe you're not comfortable with sharing now, send me a DM and I will do my best to help. And I will make sure, Oleami, that I send that uh, video to you shortly. All right, everybody, take care. Bye.